Hi, and welcome to Comsky Corner. Today we're going to be talking about ethics. This video is specifically for the new OCR GCSE Computer Science course. However, it is applicable for most exam boards. First, let's look at the different types of impacts that technology can have on society. These can be ethical issues, legal issues, cultural issues, issues to do with the environment, and issues to do with privacy. Ethics is what is considered to be right and wrong by society. Ethical issues include the fact that technology may be biased. For example, if the code for an application is written by someone who is discriminatory or biased in another way. The technology could also cost a lot, or there could be risks to users' health and safety. These are all problems, as they could cause a situation that is morally wrong. For example, if we were to look at driverless cars, there are some ethical issues involved, such as who is to blame in an accident, or who should the car prioritise in an emergency. Legal issues are offences that break the laws surrounding technology. Some examples of legal issues include illegally accessing or sharing personal data, financial information, copyrighted material, etc. Another legal issue would be using this information to blackmail someone. To combat these legal issues, internet censorship could be used. Internet censorship is control of what can be accessed, published, or viewed on the internet. There are also laws surrounding technology, such as the Data Protection Act, Computer Misuse Act, and the Copyrights, Designs, and Patents Act, and we'll look at these in a bit more detail in a bit. Cultural issues cover a broad range of concerns, including race, religion, sexual orientation, gender, and disability. They are issues that have an effect on the people and culture of society. One cultural issue is the digital divide. Digital divide is the division which exists between those individuals who can use technology and those who cannot. It is the difference in access of technology where some groups have more access to technology compared to other groups. Reasons for this include money, internet access, location, training and disabilities. For example, more affluent people can afford computers, which they can use to access more information than less affluent people. And this digital divide means that the more affluent can potentially get better jobs. Another cultural issue of technology is that surrounding the changing nature of jobs and employment. Some people believe that technology, such as artificial intelligence, could result in people losing their jobs as technology replaces them. However, there is also the reverse argument that technology produces more jobs as people are needed to develop and maintain the technology systems. Next, we have environmental issues. Environmental issues are the problems that technology creates that impact the environment. For example, the large amounts of pollution and energy and electricity use when manufacturing and transporting materials and technology. As well as this, there is the issue of mining and using raw materials and rare materials to build technology. Another issue is that as new technologies are created, people simply throw away and replace their old devices, even though they may still be functioning well. This wastes materials and creates what we call e-waste. E-waste is electronic waste and it is discarded electronic or electrical devices and its components. This includes TVs, phones, etc. This may then be placed in landfills, which is destructive to the environment. E-waste can be managed to limit any impact on the environment by the appropriate disposal of devices, including increased recycling, refurbishing of devices and materials, and changes in warranty so that a longer warranty is given so that people are more likely to keep their devices. There are some privacy concerns around technology, as once the data is inputted into a computer system, it is difficult to ensure that it won't be copied or shared. This puts people's personal data at risk and compromises their privacy. 
There are privacy laws, such as the Data Protection Act, to ensure that organisations in the UK comply with the law regarding data privacy. However, this law may be difficult to enforce in certain scenarios. For example, apps could ask for permission to access data held on your phone. Once accessed, this data could then be sent to the app producer, who may be in a different country, and therefore not subject to privacy laws in the UK, which means that this developer could then use or share the data. REPA, or the Regulatory Investigatory Powers Act, is an act which regulates the power of public bodies to carry out surveillance and investigations and covers the interception of communications. And this is another law that is enforced to try and combat privacy concerns. Here is a summary of the different types of issues that we have just covered, as well as some examples of digital technologies, including artificial intelligence, computers in different workforces, automation, and a few more. In a question, you may be asked to discuss certain types of issues surrounding one of these technologies or another one. You must discuss the relevant issues that you've been asked to discuss, for example, legal or environmental issues, and you may also find it relevant to discuss some of these other digital technologies, as long as they relate to the one you're being asked about. We will look at an example question in a little while. But for now, let's look at the different laws surrounding technology in a little bit of detail. The first law we will look at is the Data Protection Act of 2018. This law was passed by Parliament to govern the protection of personal data in the UK, ensuring that people's personal data remains private. There are many key principles within the law that have been listed here. These principles ensure that organisations keep and use people's personal data safely and fairly. Some of the principles include the fact that the data must be kept fairly and lawfully, it is only collected if it's needed, and that the data must be accurate and up to date. The data must also be kept securely and not kept longer than needed. It is a good idea to be able to state a few of these key principles. Next, we have the Computer Misuse Act of 1990. This law defines and criminalizes a number of offenses involving the use of a computer, such as unauthorized access to computer systems and the sharing or modification of computer material. This includes accessing computers with the intent to commit any of these offenses. Intent must be shown as someone could accidentally access data without meaning to if a computer is not well protected. They might also accidentally change document without realizing it. The Copyrights, Designs and Patents Act of 1988 exists to protect people's intellectual property, so their creations. This includes pictures, videos, books, games, etc. Copyright is a legal means that ensures that content creators protect what they create and get credit for their work. Copyright gives the copyright holder exclusive rights to publish, copy, distribute, and sell their creations. The Copyright Designs and Patents Act means that it's illegal to use, copy, publish, distribute, or sell copyrighted material unless you have a license or the creator's permission. A software license legally allows users to use the software whilst protecting the creator's copyrights. There are two types of licensing software, open source and proprietary, which is closed source software. Open source software can be used and distributed without a license. It is software where the source code is made freely available to be viewed and edited by anyone. This means that users can modify the software to suit their needs and to fix bugs. However, there may be lower security as it may not be developed in a controlled environment. On the other hand, proprietary software requires a license for it to be used. Users cannot access the source code as the company owns the copyright license. This means that users cannot modify and improve the software themselves. However, the software is likely to have regular, well-tested updates. It's important to know what these two types of software are and their differences, advantages and disadvantages because you might be asked to suggest a suitable software licensing and to give reasons. 
Now let's have a look at an exam style question. A small island has 100 people living on it. The island has just been connected to the internet after previously having no internet and no mobile phone signal. We're being asked to discuss the impact on the island's inhabitants and businesses of getting access to the internet. And we are being told that we might consider the impact on inhabitants, businesses, ethical issues, and of privacy issues. Pause the video here and have a go at the question, and then we'll go through some of the things that you could write. So we were given the four bullet points of inhabitants, businesses, ethical issues, and privacy issues. So we need to make sure that we talk about all of these things in our answer. First, let's have a look back at our summary page. This question clearly concerns ethical and privacy impacts. By discussing the inhabitants and businesses, cultural impacts are also involved in the question. Legal and environmental impacts are not very relevant for this question, so we can generally ignore them for the time being. Now, if we look at our examples of digital technology box, I'm going to circle computers in the workplace, censorship in the internet, and privacy and defensive communications, as these are all things that we could talk about in relation to this question, as we'll see momentarily. So now that we know what we're going to be talking about, we can start making and explaining our points. Let's start with the first bullet point of inhabitants. The people on the island having access to computers and the internet means that they could communicate with people all over the world. They can access information on the internet, such as the news, to stay up to date with the world. The computers can also be used in schools and businesses for education and selling things via e-commerce, respectively. However, buying and setting up devices and connections would cost the people on the island quite a bit of money. Just now, we briefly touched on the impacts of businesses, but going into that in a bit more detail, we could talk about how, by being able to communicate with the whole world via the internet, businesses have a larger audience to buy and sell products from. This means they can sell their products for more money and thus earn more money. They could also use computers within the tourism industry to advertise and handle the bookings of hotels and attractions. For ethical issues, as we discussed earlier, you could speak about the digital divide that could be formed, the financial benefits and or drawbacks, etc. Lastly, introducing technology onto the island would impact the privacy of the inhabitants. For example, there are security risks that could result in people's personal data, images, videos, etc. to be compromised or shared without permission. By security risks, I mean things like phishing, farming, hacking, malware, and all the other security risks that come with technology. So for each of these sections on this plan, it is important to note that this is not an exhaustive list and that there are many other correct things you could have mentioned within each section. This here is just to give you an idea of what you could have written. In this video, we have looked at some of the ethical, legal, cultural and environmental impacts that technology can have, as well as looking at some of the laws surrounding technology. If you have enjoyed this video, then please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. See you next time. Bye!